Hi there, in this video I'm just going to wrap up feature binning, just, just point out a few other things that um, you may or may not have, have already found when it comes to with this binning process, this tessellation process. Um, they, uh, um, so we'd left it before with um, having created some feature bins, these dynamic polygons. So let me just switch that back on. So I'm going to go to um, geoprocessing enable feature billing, um, billing on the pubs. And one of the options that we saw before, of course, was flat hexagon, but there, there are others. And there's pointy ones, so the points on top of the polygon. Uh, there's squaring off, obviously, square tessellation and geohash, which is sort of a rectangular version. Um, if I do pointy, just for difference, um, and then just run that. So before we had this sort of flat top um, to the to the um, dynamic polygons, and now we've got this sort of point um, pointing up. So there's there's a, a couple of versions, and and you but you can't like I think I said before you can't just switch from one to the other because what happens is once once you've created that, if we just look in the um, database, I told you that uh, previously a table's created. In the database, there's there it is there, but also uh, a column is added to your data set, uh, and there you can see it there. If I just refresh that, um, there you can see it there. So that column's added as part of the feature bidding process. So it does update your table, just so you appreciate that. Not just create a table in the schema, but it does actually update what you've already got. <clears throat> so. Um, in order to swap that sort of back to flat text again, like I said, we can't um, do that because, uh, yeah, because it's the feature bidding is already enabled, you see. So back on disable. So don't forget, we've got this column here, geo um, uh, polygon hexagon, pointy, pointy hexagon, um, pubs, run, and that will um, update the database. And now you see that is is completed. You can see the message down there, geoprocessing service message. Let's go back to the table in the database. Refresh, let's refresh all the tables, F5. Let's look at, and now just pubs is there, the other table's gone, but also that field has gone that stored the pointy hexagon um, information. One thing that um, I wanted to show you before was actually changing the symbology and also summary statistics, actually just show you a bit about that. Um, so let's re-enable feature binning. Let's re-enable feature binning. And change the bin type. So let's go pubs. Let's just make it flat hexagon. But this time I I do have a field and I've, I've added one called stats data. It's just a random data and I want the mean of it. Okay so I'm getting the mean of, of this column stats data which is just some random data. I think it's sort of some um, up to 500 or something units whatever that is. Number of visitors something like that. It's just some random data. I just want to check it. Attribute table. Uh, there is this stats data one. It's that one. I think the yeah the maximum is 500 in there. Um, so stats data is what I'm interested in. So I want to know after the sort of dynamic creation of these polygons, this tessellation. I want to know what the mean is of that column. So run that. So it's done much what what uh, we had before. But now when I when I if I sort of zoom zoom out, let's see, let's say, and and basically get less done out less polygons because like I said they're dynamically created if you click on this dark blue one that's 236 as a mean I zoom in I effectively get a recalculated mean so that's 290 25 <clears throat> so you can see the different um, values and um, one thing to, to realize actually is that these are the, the, these the, the, the darker the color actually means the number of sort of objects in it. So 
don't be sort of confused over well the mean stats data is higher so it should be darker that's not actually the case because in these ones if you if I click on them you see there's three and four um, values in there if I just turn off go to binning and turn off binning you'll see you see there's just turn it back on so it's three in this one so um, but if I go over hit here and uh, let's click on um, maybe this one over here so that's 119.5 let's turn off binning uh, there's just there's just two but the color is determined by the number of, of those objects within the shape within the dynamic polygon that's where that comes from you see so where uh, it's not like thematic shading you know highest it's it's counting the objects and that's the thing so obviously around the city center here you're getting more um, features so if I click on so if I click on the layer click on appearance uh, you transparency as usual so we can see through a bit you see so we can still do that so some of the functionality is there but certainly um, n not all not all so the the other um, sort of key thing to show you on this um, sort of binge drawing let's turn the binning back on it's just symbology so you can go to sim symbology click on unclass colors and and then select what you like so if you want a real sort of something really heating up then okay um, yellow to red maybe and there you go so it's very very easy and, and straightforward just to um, um, change the scheme to the summary statistics you can of course click on that and um, say uh, and add other stats data if if, if you want to so for example I've got the mean of stats data but what about on stats data I want the maximum um, and I can have an alias for that field press OK and and now when I click on one of these objects let's say that one I'll get the mean 205 the number of features in it 17 and the maximum stats data 498 so let's um, click on um, was that I think that was that one yeah so let's sort of zoom in on that area again and go in a bit closer so now it's get, getting less features in there uh, mean and max so actually it looks like there's, there's just one in there yeah that one there so you can add stats at will and um, uh, some uh, minimum maximum um, that's that sort of thing and uh, um, view them by by clicking on it the um, final thing I want to show is just on this scale button up here what does that really do what, what it's saying is at what scale does this bin layer because you see how it's part of the layer it's like it's almost like a group so at what le at what point do these dynamic polygons all this tessellation taking place actually turn into the individual icons so at the moment it's set to one to three thousand so if i zoom in so at the bottom there's one to six one to two and there we go they've turned on turn off and turned on so it's at one to three thousand um that was it, it put it in there it sort of did that calculation but you can of course um override and set to um, what you wish um so that was it really um just a quick uh, sort of ending really to to feature binning and um, I might actually do a bit more on this with with massive data sets. I'm just putting together some, you know, millions and millions of rows, and to try and push Arches Pro to the limit, really. And and I'll be um, bringing in that sort of thing um, uh, at some point. Anyway, hope you find that useful. Thank you.